Hi guys! Today we're doing some more in What's in My Garden DIY Concertina Sketchbook. So let's get into it. Okie dokie. So you saw in a previous video that I painted the red squirrel because we have those in the garden. And I've just today added some brown for the nuts because I'd forgotten to add that. So that's just there. It might end up sticking to uh, here, but I'm just going to dab some brown off of it to make it uh, dry a bit quicker. So it looks like it's falling nuts everywhere. So we'll turn over and the next one in the little book is a hedgehog and an owl. So I'll try and get both of those done today. And, but we might, end up going to time lapse because it does take time. So my kind of version of hedgehogs because I'm not looking at reference and I'm using a BB Craft paintbrush, one of the small round ones which is a number four and I'm just using my kids ready mix paint which is not that I have kids I mean it's just the kids ready mix paints just regular but not the washable variety I'm going in just with a mixture of brown and white So I'm kind of mixing in a bit of black to get a bit of a darker brown so that we're getting a bit of layers of different tones. And then I will do black for the eye. And then I'll put him on some glass, I think. He's kind of snuffling about, looking for grubs. And we'll give a bit of a blue background for the sky. So just wet the area a little. I mean, these kind of books are so fun because you can use them for your bigger projects. It's for inspiration and ideas. So nothing in here has to be uh, perfect. I keep saying it because we do, and me particularly, we do get stuck in our ways of trying to make everything absolutely perfect and exact and professional and realistic and it doesn't have to be I mean there are artists that it comes naturally to and that's fine but if it doesn't come naturally and you don't find it fun then that is completely okay you know you have to find your own style and I would say your own style comes from if I said to you draw me a hedgehog 
without any reference or draw just something that you you can picture in your head that you know like an apple instantly you draw it and however that comes out is your style you know and I've been battling with that for ages because I've always wanted everything to be exact and like a photo and perfect and that isn't my style that's the thing this is my style it still looks like a hedgehog but it's more I'm gonna say animated you know I'm still struggling to find a, a category to put my work into to be honest <laughs> so now we've got some owls and this is tricky because we have European tawny owls in our garden so it's difficult to actually capture that See, we put some of this yellow in with the brown to give a kind of um, sandy colour. I forget the the, the colour, <laughs> um, but I call it sandy colour. Just the yellow with the brown, yellow ochre. That's the one. I just like calling it a sandy colour because I use it for sand and pathways and all sorts really <laughs> when I want things to look sandy so I just call it sand <laughs> how about here white and brown and having this kids ready mix paint frees me up I'm not in my mind wasting expensive paint you know and I'm just you know I don't need expensive paint in a sketchbook so it helps freeze me up I'm not worried about running out of paint or wasting expensive paint because art supplies are incredibly expensive <laughs> And usually kids grade products are really rubbish. That's why this ready mix paint absolutely amazes me because it's aimed at kids and it's in UK schools up to age 16, I think. Um, and it is absolutely brilliant. And I've even noticed some of it re-wetted this morning on the palette. Now, usually Tempura won't do that. It will break up into bits. So they, at Scholar, they have done very well. I really can't praise it enough. some yellow for behind the eye and some do have yellow beaks but I'm going to tone it down with a bit of a greyish colour. If I have some over here, yes, I do. Because I've also just got to add bits of grey over here just to indicate some different tones and some feathers on the inner ear. 
it's kind of a bit thin. Too much water on my brush. <laughs> Just gonna put some of this sparkly, like unicorn gold, uh, silver, over the beak. Again, it's a scholar paint, but I like to call it unicorn silver. Just adds a nice shimmer. It's just mica powders, basically, in the paint, and you can mix it with your other colours. And then I'll go in just with a dash of grey. And I think I'll do a blue background again. And there we are, we're finished. So I hope you've enjoyed these two little paintings in the DIY concertina sketchbook. And I'll catch you really soon, guys. See ya!